Wow, what a great crowd we have here tonight. And did you know something? This is the last show of our first year. We have completed one year of shows here in our theater in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Thank you for being a part of 52 shows right here. I'll tell you, it's hard to believe we've been doing this a year because we are having some kind of fun. It seems like we just got started, and frankly, we did. Okay, look, I learned some things raising kids and training dogs. Here's what I learned. If there's a behavior that you want more of, what do you do? You reward it. And if there's a behavior that you want less of, you consequence it. Now, I would say that you punish it, but in these days of political correctness, we don't punish anymore. We just consequence it with things like time out. Boy, I wish that had been around in my day. <laughs> Instead, I grew up with a very patriotic father. He laid on the stripes, I saw the stars. <laughs> I wonder if we applied the common sense of raising kids and training dogs to the economy. Here's what would happen. We would reward productivity and we would consequence inactivity. I mean, let's think about it. What would make for a strong economy? Things like work, savings, investment, and long-term planning. Those are key factors for a strong economy. But our current tax structure punishes those things. That's right. A tax is like a punishment. And we tax work with the income tax. We tax the money that you save with a tax on savings. We tax your investments if they're good, and we tax those with capital gains and tax on dividends. And if you set aside money for your latter days, as well as to leave something for the next generation, we actually tax you after you die with estate taxes. But the same tax system rewards you for not working by giving you tax-free subsidies in income, food, housing, healthcare, and transportation. And if you make a bad investment, we reward you by letting you write it off your tax obligations. If you spend every single dime and leave nothing for your final days or anything for those after you, you'll be taken care of by the government. This insanity is why I've been a strong supporter of the fair tax. Now, the fair tax is pretty simple. We eliminate the IRS altogether. We get rid of them. Yes, we do. And we are not taxed on what we produce. Rather, we're taxed only on what we consume. Simply put, no more taxes on work, investment, savings, or dying. We pay taxes when we buy something instead of when we produce something. Of course, we understand we need some form of tax or revenue to provide for the military, roads, police, and fire departments, schools, and government essentials. But the fair tax is flat, fair, finite, and family friendly. You control how much tax you pay by how much stuff you buy. And it would mean getting your entire paycheck Nothing would be taken out. Right now, you loan the government money and you get nothing for it. It would uh, also mean that people who don't pay the same taxes that you do because they operate in the underground economy, I'm talking people like drug dealers, prostitutes, pimps, and gamblers. Let me assure you, they ain't filling out 1040 forms. <laughs> but they'd start paying because while they may not file those tax returns, they still buy stuff and they'd pay like the rest of us. Economists like Stephen Moore say the fair tax would supercharge the economy. So if it would work so well, why won't the politicians pass it? Because of the dirty little secret about the tax code. You see, the tax code is used to create winners and losers. And those who contribute to the campaigns, they get favors in the tax code, and they're the winners. And those who don't give big bucks, they don't get special treatment in the tax code, and they end up losers. I've raised kids and I've trained dogs. Formula's pretty simple and fair. And taxes ought to be as simple as fair and as common sense as that. And that is my view. Thank you.